Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez and today I'm going to be giving you 10 tips for shooting portraits at night with flash. Since you're going to be shooting at night, getting the focus on your subject is going to be a bit of a challenge. Unless you have night vision and really good eyesight from manually focusing, you're going to want to use something like a flashlight. And luckily enough, most of our phones nowadays have a flashlight. One, two, three. If you tend to shoot alone, you'll want to see if you have or might want to invest in transmitters like these where they have the autofocus assist beams so that you can get the focus on your subject. Yeah, I like it. Okay. All right. One, two. The key thing that you'll be aiming for when shooting portraits at night is bringing up those ambient light levels so that your subject isn't in complete darkness. And one way you can do that is widening the aperture. The lenses you have determine how wide of an aperture you can go to. Some are limited to something like f3.5, while others can go as wide as f1.2. You're also going to have to slow your shutter a bit to bring up the ambient light even further, so if you can, use a tripod unless you have some really steady hands to avoid camera shake. I took this shot at a slow shutter speed, and although I did nail the focus on the first try, I did mess up the focus on the second and the third try. Some cameras and lenses even have built-in stabilization to help reduce camera shake at slower shutter speeds. I bought the Sony a6500 not too long ago because it has built-in stabilization and that was something that was important to me because every now and then I do kind of get shaky hands. Depending on the scene you're in, slowing the shutter might not be enough so you may also want to consider raising the ISO. If your camera can't handle high ISO levels, then you want to bring it up to the highest that it can go to before the grain starts to overtake the image and slow the shutter more. Noise reduction is something you can also consider just in case you absolutely need to shoot at those higher ISO levels. At night, you won't need that much power at all, so I definitely recommend a speed light like this as opposed to something like a strobe. You should also see which of the speed lights you have can go to the lowest output. Nowadays, there's even mini versions of speed lights like this little guy right here that have a little bit more than half the power of a normal speed light. So something like this is going to be your best bet for shooting at night. In the case that your light is still too strong at the lowest power, you'll want to diffuse it. Let's say you started the shoot with the bare flash. If you have a diffusion cap like this, you'll want to put it on so you can bring the intensity of the light down. I personally use an Octabox and the Octabox has two diffusion panels which is really helpful because each panel diffusion cuts the light down one stop. If you're still experiencing an overexposed shot, then what you can then do is move the light further away. Depending on how much the shot is overexposed will determine how far away you will move the light. It's important to note that the quality of light will change when you move it further away. When shooting in the daytime, you'll have the sun as a secondary light source to separate your subject from dark backgrounds that might be around them. At night, you won't have that sun, so you need to have a second light or find lights in the area to create that separation. If your subject has dark hair or clothing, it can easily blend into the night and you'll want to avoid that. Right now, I have a light that is separating my hair from the background. Once I turn it off, you'll see how my hair just kind of just blends into it. Unless you want to aim for that look, you'll need to create some sort of separation. Going back to when I suggested you should use a flashlight to get the focus, I wanted to add that once you get the focus down, you want to ask the person that's helping you to move the light off the subject before you take the shot. Depending on the settings, the flashlight might cause an overexposure. You don't want to experience that and mess up your whole setup when all you have to do is just remove the light. If you have multiple lights on your subject, you might get an odd color if the color temperatures aren't the same. This can create a look that you may or may not want. For this reason, I recommend putting your subject in a scene where there's little to no light on the front of them. In this shot, I did have some light on my face, so once I slowed down the shutter too much, the light began to look too saturated on my face, creating a look that I didn't really like. In addition to being careful about the color temperatures of the ambient light sources, you should also keep in mind how you want those ambient light sources to look. Let's say, for example, in this shot I took, I wanted the ambient light behind her to be less orange. In order to make that happen, I could have just put a half CTO, that's color temperature orange, gel on the light. If you guys are interested in seeing a video based on gels, hit the like button to let me know and I'll definitely work on that. If you have a speed light with TTL, definitely use it. Not many people realize this, but using TTL on your speed light can help your speed light go lower than it normally can. 
It's able to do this because T-Tail itself uses a pre-flash and that pre-flash uses power. So when you use T-Tail, you're able to go about two to three stops below what your speed light normally can without T-Tail. So if you have two speed lights that are the same power, but one has T-Tail, that's the one that you're gonna wanna use. That mini speed light I mentioned earlier actually has T-Tail, so it's a pretty good option for shooting portraits at night. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do hope this helps and you get some great night portraits after seeing this video. If you haven't already done so, please hit that like button and or subscribe if you found this video helpful at all. Also, feel free to comment to let me know what you guys want to see from me so I can make that content for you guys. I'm totally open to suggestions. All right, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ryan! See, look. One, two, three. See? Look up there, the camera. See? Cheese. Okay. Ah, okay. <laughs>